Welcome back to Shadowrun Hong Kong. So last time, we finished up with our final mission before we're going on to the next story mission. I'm going to spend my points now, as I said before. I have 13 karma now, total. So the first thing I'm going to get is range of combat 6. That'll let me equip that laser rifle for myself. And then I have 7 left, which I can put uh, into these 3 rifle abilities, which should help me to be better with that laser rifle when I get it. Um, so that's the plan. And the rest of my points, my next points will go back, I think I'll dump back into intelligence next time I get karma, uh, and try to get decking up to 6 and 7 and blah blah blah. Uh, and that'll be what I focus on next. And then, we think we got the last level for our party members here, which definitely leads me to believe we're getting very close to the end game. So, she's haste. Hmm. I can buff haste. Okay. Hmm. I want the better haste. Napalm. Not that I'm going to be using her, but again, I'll be using her most likely if and only if we go on a decking heavy mission. Duncan has a magnetic cyber arm, let me throw back incoming grenades. Are they on the crowd control? Whirlwind. Sounds cool. Heavy late. Remember what I said before? About lasers? There was that part I mentioned before. About lasers. Let's go. I actually remember. We should go talk to Koshe. I forgot. Er, ah, Raptor. I keep bringing this up. Touch a Ractor now that we're done with um, the. We did his mission. We can go talk about his auto repair thing. That might not be active until we go talk to him. I totally forgot to do that. So let's claim our money first. Then I'm going to keep saving money just in case. Uh, we get more stuff. Money I promise to touch this month. Glad we're working out the pen for both of us. Great. Here are Clean payment for sold pay data. 350 for that construction. Da da da. There's pay data. Turn to Aries research. I forgot about that. I should have done that before. Oopsie. Zero on red messages. Sounds good. Alright, Raptor. Let's talk. Done an admirable job, an admirable job indeed. I've already incorporated the technology recovered and my stolen tech into new chassis and fabric in for crochet. Glad to be of help. Very glad indeed. New tech crochet's combat effect is considerably improved. So he'll mend himself for your eyes. That's made not incredible. Can I see that on crochet's person? Well, first of all, I need to, uh, Oh, am I not allowed to do the thing? Okay. I'll trade a... I need to go get myself a laser rifle. I'm gonna see if people have conversations, because I'm sure that they do. Does anyone have shotgun abilities? I don't know. Let's go talk and talk to people and see if we've got any updates from people about stuff. I'm not going to talk right now. I got my head right brain on this Edward Sang thing. Let's talk about something else then. 
not right now. I don't want to talk about night. The last run of Walt's Lee or Triads or anything. Guys gotta think, work through this. Sixteen years. For those of them, sixteen years, we never knew the man. Sixteen motherfucking years. Talk to you later. Okay. Let's see if Gobbit has her last story. How's Isabel doing? I imagine we're done with Isabel, but well, she has some memories to come through. You step in Isabel's cabin and the face you. The desk she's been working at is a mess. Food wrappers, computer, expansion cards, lie together in heat. Isabel herself doesn't look much better. Her eyes are badly bloodshot and her lips have been drawn to a deep frown. You're back, hey. What do you need? How are you holding up? Not great. I'll manage. Is there anything I can do? I seriously doubt it. Appreciate the offer, though. My lock was a memory that I told you they were crystal clear, right? Every detail is perfect. It's still that way. I think it always will be. I guess the question is, if the memories aren't going to change, can you adapt to living with them? Honestly, I don't know. It's like having an eidetic memory. I'm stuck with a perfect record of every shitty thing that I saw and felt during my childhood in hell. It's not easy to live with. Mm. Why not lock memories away when you're not using them? You have the key to unlock them when you need them. That seems trite. I'd say this is better. If memories are this painful for you, we can lock them away again after all this is over and you can throw away the key. That's what I'm hanging on to, the fact that I can dish my childhood again over the things that I saw. All the more reason to get through this business with Walt City quickly. If I want to ask you guys about that place, you can go ahead. I think I've had enough time to process it in my head. She would give you some answers. Not all the answers, but something. I have a question about the Walled City. How'd you get out of there when you were a kid? How'd you escape? God, it lived me out. How'd she manage that? Go ahead and ask her. I'm sure she'll be happy to bring brag about it. I think that we have more pressing matters to discuss. Something else. Another question about the Walled City. Nope, I guess that's it. Alright. Hey, Gob Gob. Ready for your next lesson? Absolutely. Hit me with it. Straight to business. I like that. Good. This one is about people like Auntie Chang and why we need them. There won't be a Q&A session at the store, but I want you to listen up. It's important. I'm all ears. Here's the upfront lesson. Pictures are important. You can't just go to a Johnson yourself and get a job. I mean, you can, but you shouldn't. It's a bad idea all around. Okay, go on. The reason why it's a bad idea to cut people like Andy Chang out is because you need someone to vet your client. That's important. It protects the whole team. You, I uh, remember the lesson from last time the one about Sui and the shiny objects? Yeah. Well, after the problem was over, we went back to the sinking ship for some R&R. &R. Sui told us that the client would be sending a boat to collect the shiny object in the morning. All we had to do was keep the thing safe until we hand off. We were in a celebratory mood. We'd kill the wizard and sold a priceless artifact. A good night's work by human standards. Bono and Edgar got good and drunk in record time. So he went back to his cabin with a shiny object to, I don't know, stare at it for a while or something. Tried in my cabin and crashed out. It had been a long night. I remember waking up to sounds. Yelling, maybe? I was groggy and they were far away. I would, couldn't quite make them out. Clock said 4.30 a.m. People were always partying on the raft, playing loud music, shooting off fireworks, that kind of thing. Loud noises early in the morning were not usual. It was only felt off somehow. Mm. I used to get that every now and again in the barracks. I learned to listen to it. It's a lot like panic attack, really, that full body certainty that something is wrong. Got to investigate. If something was wrong, I wanted to know. If I wasn't, I figured that I might as well get in on the party. Stepped out in the hallway, my foot slipped, came my hard, landed on my ass, and found myself sitting in a pool of blood. That's not good. No, it was pretty bad. So it was pretty obvious by this point that something had gone horribly wrong. At first, I thought the shiny object might have, I don't know, unleashed something. That's why I saw it doing that warehouse, I would, wouldn't have been surprised. Shook that off pretty quick, though. I knew what this was. Our client was playing us. He hired us to steal a thing, and rather than paying us for the job, he sent another team to take it away. Given what happened to the warehouse, I'd assume that the shiny object was to blame. Sure, I get that, but I did some scary shit back in the warehouse, but I've also been sitting dormant for a long time for Sweeney and I stole it. Anyway, I got to brush myself off, and then I beeline for Malvina's cabin. She was the closest thing the sinking ship had to a leader in the strongest scratch on the raft. Wrapped him under attack, that's probably what I would have done, too. Seemed like the right thing at the time. It was a retrieval team hung for the shiny object and they were strong to handle Swee while he was holding it. What chance would I have of stopping them on my own? I figured that it was time to grab a big gun to Alvina was the one who I could get them from. I, uh, I passed some pretty bad stuff on my way down to Alvina's cabin. This old man in Yen's vault all over again. Torn up body, blood streaked floors. I saw people who had been cut apart with machetes, scorch marks in the container walls. Deep down in the pit of my gut, I could feel that thumbing vibration of the shiny object. That heartbeat feeling that I had in the warehouse. It was back and stronger than ever. Whatever that rock was, it was awake. I kind of figured that hanging out of that thing was a bad idea. Hey, I didn't like being close to the thing either. It was our payday for a job and we didn't have a choice. We had to fold it. I sprinted on the last stretch of a corridor to Melvina's cabin. I can't tell you what a relief it was from my shoulder into the door and I feel it pop open and go tumbling into that room. And somebody smashed a gun into my face. It was Cadmus, my friend. Jen, the muzzle of Super Warhawk in my cheek so hard it hurt me, grabbing by the belt with his other hand. I wasn't going anywhere. Just looked over her shoulder, I saw Melvina. She didn't look amused. Did you think you were in on the attack somehow? 
yeah, well, there was an attack. Our client had nothing to do with it. Turns out there was no client. So we had lied to us. By helping him to steal this shiny object, I'd unwillingly given him what he needed to foment a mutiny. It turns out our betrayal hurts, Axel. Belvina felt it, and I felt it too. So we had been a friend. I distressed my life to save Blaze like four hours ago. And he tricked me into helping him do something unthinkable. What'd you do? What could I do? Didn't have a whole lot of options, and Cadmus was kind of on edge. Like, red faced and screaming. So I opened my mouth, and I fast talked my way out of it. Started off by doubling down my loyal little Malvina, Cadmus, and the status quo on the sinking ship. So I went on dying friendship, you know the drill. Did a good job of it, but they still looked a little iffy. If we were the Warhawk, it's bad. I volunteered to prove myself by stealing the shiny object back from Swee. That follows, I guess. I mean, he only had it because of you, right? That was the idea, yeah. I mean, I didn't have a choice. I didn't inadvertently help to arm the bastards, tearing our friends and neighbors apart. Don't think I could have cleared my name without taking his weapon away again. Hell of a night, don't want to get into any de gory details. Friends die, and hell friends kill each other. It was brother against brother, all that jazz. He used indiscriminate use of shiny object, but a lot of things in this world that shouldn't have been. Did you get a good view of them this time? Yeah, wish that I hadn't, but it did. I don't really know how to describe the things. They're like animals, but wrong. Too many tails, bones in the wrong places, huge open sores, that kind of thing. Spirits manifested in physical form, I think. Most of them took the form of rats, swarms, into insects, rotting things, all the old pestilence tropes. Sometimes there are colonies of things, all tangled together and moving as one. Not the sort of thing I want to see again. Ever. Anyway, long story short, I got the shiny object back from Sweet. It wasn't easy, but I got it. And... And I took it back to Malvina. She put the thing to better use than Sweet ever did. She took it to the thing... She took the thing like she'd grown up using it. Still lost dozens of people, but Sweet's side lost more. Cadmus was critically wounded, but he pulled through. After the skirmish, Malvina had him held in assembly. She told every of the new rules for life on the raft. And he refused to follow them, could leave. And if he broke them, you were done. Rules of the sea and all that. After their announcement, she turned on the surviving mutineers. Anu was one of them. He'd been out of Sweet's plan the whole time. She didn't kill him, but she'd exiled him from the sinking ship. People on our economic racket, that was as good as a one-way trip to the walled city. I'd be willing to bet they're all dead by now. Wake of Malvina's ultimatum, five survivors left the sinking ship. I was one of them. I wouldn't have hung around either. You know how it is. We have we may have washed the blood off that actually the energy of the sinking ship had changed. It wasn't the carefree haven that I loved anymore. As senseless as Malvina's words were, I wasn't into living under them. I had to go. Hard and good, but sad turn. And as you'd expect, we drifted apart over the years. It's funny. They didn't have thought of Malvina or the sinking ship in years. Not until I decided to teach you your previous lesson and it all came flooding back in. That's the story. It's finished. I want to circle back on the lesson that I gave you up front because it's important. We need anti chain to bring this work. That's obvious. We also need her to keep us honest. To be sure that we, on the team, are playing straight with one another. Anti Chang's reputation rides in the legitimacy of the job that she brings us, and that, more than anything, is why we need her. If we didn't have Anti Chang or someone like her, we'd eventually tear ourselves apart. <laughs> happen on the sinking ship, it could happen again in Hayway. That's the lesson. You got follow up questions? Go ahead and ask them. What did Melvina do with the shiny object? She first used to get rid of the things that Sweet had loose, and she put it away for safekeeping. That's why still there in the sinking ship, and Scott's in some shrine or other, held under lock and key. She would have, to, should have tossed the thing into the bay. Yeah, agreed. I didn't like it either, but then she'd already proven that she could handle the thing, and it did help her out put down Sweet's mutiny. Plus, she's a shaman. We deal with dangerous magic beyond mortal ken on a daily basis. It's not that weird for us. Yeah, but still. Remember that she'd just watched her home, the home that she was the, the guy to protect, tear itself apart. She'd lost a lot of friends and fall, failed to be the leader. I think that hit her pretty hard. And the shiny object she saw something that could keep her from ever, that from ever happening again. Given the choice between tossing it and keeping it in the back pocket, well, you do the math. The further she dished the thing, it wasn't my choice. Still, she's, and she's still in power, so I guess that worked out okay. What happened to Sweet? Walking, Collis to me bag was already dead. He invited his own mom to the shiny object away. Turns out he wasn't much good at controlling them without it. Didn't even live long enough to watch his mutiny fail. Got a question about his spell. She told me you led her out of Walled City when you were kids. Care to fill in the details on that? Guess I'm not surprised. Is he never got? Is never has been big on padding a story for necessary detail. So we got a best. We got a best interest. Da da da. I guess you need to know what the Walled City was like. What I mean is for kids. She didn't tell you anything about that, did she? She wasn't big on volunteering unnecessary information. And that's what I thought. Starters, you probably should know that the Walled City wasn't always as bad as it is now. It was always dangerous, but ten years ago it was just a run of the mill slum, still safe enough that walking in it didn't qualify as a suicide attempt. In the Walled City earlier, I wasn't impressed. You're in the safest place in the Walled City, actually. The Lotus Den is a lot of luxury compared to the rest of the place. And you go deeper toward the center, it gets a hell of a lot worse. That's cool, I believe you. Good, we're pretty stupid in your Nazi. People avoid the Walled City like the plague for a reason. Back when I was a kid, it was pretty much all what you saw, in, like what you saw in the Lotus Den. Not exactly Victoria Harbor, but survival if you knew what you were doing. We used to play in the Walled City. Rat would lead me to all the nooks and crannies that grown are too big to fit through. There was the other young shaman there I used to play with. His name was Happy or Lucky, something like that. 
He followed Pig. Nice guy. Good card player. Obviously, none of this was a good idea. Teenage girl going to the Walled City by herself. Recipe for disaster. Didn't realize any of this at the time, though. I loved playing the alleys and crossways to the Walled City. It was fun. Where did it have that how you met Isabel? Yep, inside the wall, there are these districts. You saw one one earlier when Shanks sent you after Strangler Bow, the Lotus Den. Yeah, I remember. Isabel and her family lived in the Mansion District, sort of a holding home for refugees from the Middle East and Africa, based on anyone who was an Asian, European, or goblinoid. It's less pleasant than it sounds. I was a call no goblinoids, there weren't any orcs or trolls in Isabel's district. No, people like me and Duncan get our own districts in the Walled City, regardless of their country of origin. No, it's because she plays within the outer perimeter of the wall. These are advantages to being big and strong, especially when everyone around you is too malnourished to fight back. Of course, the residents of the goblinoid districts all share a meditative or two. They got something in common, which said a shared experience time with the other. Not so in the Mansion District. The only thing those people had in common was their skin color and the fact they were living in crushing poverty. They weren't even, it wasn't even a common language for them to speak. Pretty rough place. Lots of infighting, lots of gang and gang violence. You lived band together for protection, but there wasn't a lot of hope. Everyone lived in fear of being sent deeper into the slum toward the center. If you start getting dragged in that direction, you don't come back. Sounds like a charming place. Yeah, charming. That's where I met Isabel. It wasn't a lot of people friends. She was interesting. That's why I let her latch on to me. The girl was smart and savvy, but cripplingly shy. She didn't belong in the walled city. No one really does, but with her it was painfully obvious. She was like a wee little mouse crammed in a box full of weasels. Only matter of time before somebody snapped her up. You got her out of it before that could happen. That's right. More well, accurately, Rat got her out of there. She came to me in a dream, showed me that whatever was going into bad in the walled city was getting worse. The whole place was rotting from the inside out, choking in bad she and lost hope. Decided to go inside one more time, but found Isabel had offered to lead her out. I didn't. Well, I get it. You don't have to explain yourself to me. Thanks. It isn't pleasant to think about, especially considering what a shithole the walled city is now. The truth of the matter is, if I hadn't pulled Isabel out of there, she'd probably be dead by now. Get it? Someone did the same for me and Duncan once. I knew you'd get it, and I did bump into her, and she did follow me and racket us out of both safe. So there you have it. Happy endings all around. What about Isabel's family? She said they were still in the walled city. Why didn't you bring them with you? I think I didn't want to. It's going to be dangerous enough to get Isabel out on her own. Dragging the whole family out of with her would have been impossible. Why? But they weren't like me in it. They hadn't grown up in the streets. They were upper class people back in Somalia before they emigrated to Hong Kong. They're hopelessly out of their elements. Even if I had managed to find them, they probably would have done something stupid and gotten us killed. We just left them? Damn right I did. If I'd managed to convince them to come with us, they would have gotten caught. The Yellow Lotus would have kidnapped them if they were lucky. They were unlucky at the thrill gangs, but the organ leggers might have gotten them. Well, it wasn't even worth the rest to try. Besides, which Isabel didn't want. Besides, which Isabel didn't want to bring her out. She wanted to get away from them as much as she did from the Walled City. Never could get her to tell me why. That's all. We talk about something else. Thanks, got it. Lessons are for your benefit, but I think they help me too. Nice to be taken seriously. Problem, got it. I'll look forward to the next one. Me too. I'm gonna move on. I got goblet things to do. I'm gonna call it to guide you, and then, uh. I think he has a mission, if I'm not mistaken. But he might not, but I'm gonna check. And then I'll probably end this before we go to the next. Eh, we'll see. I'll start the story quest, and then we can cut out in the middle of it, maybe. Eh, I'm gonna the shadows. Other employment. Cannibals only experience in military operations. Why not ask Raku? But Samurai, who are wounded, are given the best in medical treatment and cybernetics. If they are insufficient during the active duty, they're given a pension and retired. In practice, this is never the case. But Samurai teams do everything together. Eat, sleep, train, play. We have learned to think of each other and move as a single entity. Part of that team is broken and affects everyone. Other members of this unit would be distracted, thinking about a wounded comrade, and would present a new member for usurping the old member's place. Wounded invariably hit the same course of action for the good of the team. Ritual suicide. Except coup. Interesting way to ensure unit cohesion. Perhaps in the USAS or other Western countries it would not be necessary. But for us, the laws of etiquette are different. Some call it extreme, but it's always done willingly. On all, or almost always, I should say. In my case, I became infected while on a sabotage mission against Shiawase in Osaka. The unit was ex exfiltrating on foot from Naniwa Ward through the Aran Chiku slums. We did not anticipate a ghoul nest on our route. I surprised you got the better of me, and I was bitten. Understand since the passage of the Amato Act, Japan is a pure country. Many humans are deported, and to be infected with HMHBV is to be less than an animal. You will be killed on sight. Since this was, in effect, the same as being permanently crippled in the eyes of my team, it was expected that I should kill myself. That sounds pretty fascist. When I was younger, I would have argued that you simply don't understand what it means to be Japanese. I think now, however, that you are correct. The Amato Act is a convenient way to encourage nationalistic fervor while avoiding the racial problems of our nation by simply removing non-humans. Because I was still capable of fighting, I questioned the necessity of suicide. Why should I die if I was still as effective as before? 
because I know we're having something with my diet changed. One does not scar to quality tools and leave because the surface is stained. I made the decision to leave while the unit was allowing me the time to prepare for my exit the suicide. Nothing but my weapons, armor, and a small number of personal mementos. Knew that a unit would hunt me down and kill me. Ghouls are considered vermin in Japan. The Red Samurai become one and refuse to die unconscionable. So not the Red Ox the Samurai take honor very seriously. They do, to an anachronistic degree. Political and ideological indoctrination. As much as part of the training is physical fitness and weapons practice. In order to use this, they make certain you will only turn on enemies of the company and the nation. They found me two weeks after our man. I was careless as I fled south, and they caught up with me in Fukuoka, but I escaped, barely. Because at that point, I decided I should leave Japan. I knew they would never stop hunting me, but I could make it more difficult for them. I do end up in Hong Kong, searching for a cure. Over to China, hope we'll be able to return home. That was final if I fled somewhere nearby. First to Shanghai, when Rocky's presence there is certainly more robust than Hong Kong. Previous unit had not stopped hunting me after I left Japan, so I decided to move a field, hence Hong Kong. Uh, Seattle comes to mind. If Rocky were not building that tower in our college, if you got into the skyline, I would agree with you. Since it clearly has that kind of influence in the city, it seemed unwise to make my residence there. I always liked Hong Kong, and it has more character than the UCA. Uh, since arriving here, I've drifted between neighborhoods, selling my services to those who are unafraid of my appearance and condition. It has not been as profitable as I hoped. Should go over the corporation. Da, da, da. Not what I expected to see. Picture is it? Obviously, I'm not able to see the image. You're standing by a railing overlooking the city. Must be Mount Maya. I remember I, I made better than I got in that fight. Three against one, but they were out of shape and cocky. Caused a lot of trouble. Father Brady needs some responsibility. He bailed me out of jail. It's not a straw. Been in jail a few times. What did you do? So a delivery van had a shipment of Shia say Simpsons decks, brand new, very expensive. Family with what it's like to grow up in a corporate family. I know a thing or two about it, yeah. We decided how to children are encouraged to participate in acts of vandalism at the rival corps. Of course, we were caught by Shia say security on Rocky. Make your father approved, even secretly. Doubt it very much. The activity was not the issue. It was that I was caught and embarrassed both the company and him. Proper way to do things, I had once again cut corners. What do you do next? Arranging to do. That's what you want. I think I, there's a quest I think I need to unlock with him that I fucked up because I haven't been talking to him enough. Alright, so let's go. We're gonna start the next quest. I think it's a long one, so we'll start it and then we'll cut out uh, part way through and pick it up next time. But yeah, that's all pretty much we have left. I'm gonna save my cash for the moment. Meet with Dreamland. Tenement that Dreamland lives in smells of mold and desperation. The people living here are the kind who don't want to be found. This is a red place, Axel. Um, Emily should be here in the first apartment. Is she dangerous? She should be. Oh, he's a decker, yes, but she's really more into programming than she is violence. Randall is Dreamland, after all. She quit running last year, something about some sort of activist activity that she used to be into. A bunch of big money execs were holding a grudge. Emily's from Berlin, but she moved to Hong Kong after the F-State collapsed. The shock woman, well and writer, that's the group she worked for, were supposed to protect her, they got their own problem to deal with now. Her about the fall of the F-State sounded like chaos. An experiment in sustained institutional anarchy, great environment for Shadow Madam, just like communism did another pipe dream. The German government gave the corporations the go-ahead to invade, and they forced the anarchists to retreat to the eastern part of the city. Now Berlin is by the core, just like Hong Kong. But they wind up building a wall again. We wouldn't put it past them. It's interesting, after Dragon Fall, everything fell. Maybe that's what the... I wonder if Emily's going to be a character from Dragonfall. I think she is. Anything I should know before we talk to Dreamland? No clue, really. Never met her in Meat Space. Just be your charming self, I guess. I'm sure that everything will work out just fine. I think something bad's going to go down. Maybe not terrible, because I don't have anyone here but me and Isabel, and they wouldn't lock us up. Apartment is no better than the hallway. Empty fast food cups and packages of dried snack foods are strewn about the room. In the corner, a box of cat litter sits filled over the floor. You don't see any cats. It's a passenger in the Matrix terminal sitting in the stack of crates connected to a banged up cyberdeck. With an RMG, the cyberdeck is 20 slang woman with pale white skin, dirty blonde hair, and a bleak expression. Nope, doesn't look familiar. Sir Isabel, huh? Didn't expect a dwarf? Yeah, get that a lot. No, no, I didn't expect you to be so pretty. She never agreed to this, Isabel. She'd have never responded to your message if the oligarch swine had been hunting me to find out where I am. They won't find out from us. Uh-huh. This is a man I told you about. He needs the software to develop to inhabit your cortical implant. He needs what? I don't think I should be getting into this. 
I need your help, Emily. That's great, Axel. Now go away. I've got my own problems to deal with. In case you're not up on current events, I got a line of mercs and bounty hunters after me, messing around with the headwear that the shock and shock well and writer. This all to me is the last thing on my mind. Look, this is important. I need the software you created so I can find out what happened to my father. Your father, huh? Sound drop. Is he dead? My brother doesn't think so. But you're not so sure, huh? Raw deal. Okay, give me a minute. I only got through Cyberdeck and Jax into it. Her jaw goes slack and her fingers hover the keyboard tapping keys at a blinding speed. When she's finished, she jacks out and injects a data stick from the deck. Here. Modify this taser with it and use it on your target. And Jill just stop the matter what process before it starts. Here's a lesson for your effort. Thanks, it'll help. Wish every problem was that easy to solve. Alrighty. So I have to use that to, uh, incapacitate, uh, fucking the plastic-faced man. And then when I go on that quest, that'll be it. Uh, at least the next big story thing, so... Next time, because at this point, it's way too late to start this. Next time we'll go, and we will finish this. Well, maybe finish this, I don't know. See you then.